Hi guys, uh, welcome to class. Um, today we're going to be talking about history life, a lesson five transition of fish. Um, we're going to be talking about the evolution and kind of how things have changed over time to so kind of where they are today. Um, so one of the things I want to keep in mind when you're taking your notes um, is that um, what does the fossil record tell us about how life has changed over time? Um, this is our essential question that we need to keep in mind as Again, like I mentioned before, we continue to look at as we go through and talk about um, the things we're learning. Um, we're going to observe some of the pictures of fish, and then we're going to make some inferences of the fish. So you're going to make sure that you're kind of following along and doing those things. Um, this is going to be important for you as you continue to keep learning. Um, at the end, there's going to be some essential questions you're going to be asked to answer. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So, looking here, this is your modern fish. Um, essentially, if you were ever go fishing or if you have before, you've probably caught in one and kind of seen what they look like. Um, they probably have different variations of scales, different variations of color, um, different types of fins. Um, sometimes you can hold them, um, sometimes you cannot. They're sharp, um, they'll scratch you, cut you, whatever, um, for safety. Um, they'll have gums, sometimes have teeth, sometimes they do not. Um, but there's different types of fish that you see. Um, if you scroll down in the fin, bones are arranged in a ray pattern. Um, so obviously what you can't see here, so if I zoom down a little bit, um, what you'll see is in their fin here, it allows for them to kind of swim and move. Their bones are arranged in a ray pattern. Um, fish do have bones. Um, and some people don't think they do, but they do. It allows for them to move, but they're very flexible kinds of bones, so it allows them to swim. Um, so also when you observe this fish, write down some observations that you see that maybe I haven't mentioned. Um, and then what inferences you can make about this fish. Um, maybe ask some questions. Where do they live? Um, is it in salt water? Is it in fresh water? Um, is it in lakes, rivers, the ocean? What kind of inferences can you make based off of this fish? Um, and then how does this fish move? It swims using its fins? Does it move its body side to side? You know, what inferences can you make about that? Like, use those questions to kind of help you. Um, and then I want you to look at the skeletal structure of it, okay? What do you notice about the structure of the fin? Is it, um, I mean, is it long? Is it thin? Um, are they thick bones? Are they small bones? Like, what do you notice? What do you notice about them? Um, give me some detail of what you see, all right, about the fin. And do not copy what's in the box. Some students have done that. If you do that, you will lose points. So make sure you're writing your own description, okay? All right. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is that we are going to understand a little bit more about some other fishes. So, so scientists think that life on Earth began in the water and continued in the water until continents emerged millions of years ago. One of the areas of inquiry of how life was made, the transition, change from water to land. The first land animals were insects, but there was much interest about how vertebrates made a transition from water to land. So basically what I'm saying is that fish, essentially, we started with fish, right? Um, we were in water, but eventually they made their way to land. So let's talk a little bit about that. So moving down here, um, in this picture here, in this ecosystem, you can kind of see, you know, different type of fish, right? Um, this is the Devian period, 419 to 359 million years ago. Um, this is kind of what we're talking about when we look at ecosystems. Um, you know, there's land up here, but there's fish, there's water, there's, you know, snails, you know, an ecosystem down here, you know, they have teeth, they're looking to try to eat something, obviously. Um, so obviously there's some changes. Um, there's different variations, um, and we're trying to understand how these vertebrae started the transition from water to land. So what would water-dwelling fish move onto land, okay? So why would they? Um, it's a good question to ask us. Um, it would have caused some fish to develop legs and feed over the course of a million years. Um, these are some things you should be asking yourself, all right? And these are also some questions that you'll probably have on your answer sheet that you should be answering as well. So 
So where can we look for evidence about how vertebrae made the transition from water to land, from fish to animal with legs? The answer is the fossil record. The fossil record allows us and tells us how life has changed over time. It tells us what we need to understand about history and maybe when these things existed. Okay, so that is essentially the main important thing. All right, the next thing we're going to do is look at the transitions, okay? So um, in your guys' books, what you have here on page 78 and 79 um, is transitions. Um, it talks a little bit about the fish we kind of just saw and the questions we're asking ourselves. So the first thing we are going to look at is the ancient lungfish. Um, one of the things I want to point out is that in your worksheets, you're going to be filling out a worksheet on the fish table, okay? You're going to need to make sure you are doing your time period, you're understanding the habitat, the length, and the fish, the fins, and the limbs. You're going to be writing descriptions on these as we go through this. So if you need to come back and review this, you can. Um, but this is essentially the worksheet you're going to be filling out to make sure that you are staying on task and making sure you're getting your notes filled out. Um, so back to the transitions um, and the fish. Um, the ancient lungfish. The fossils are 390 million years old. Um, their defined characteristics, um, they're completely aquatic, meaning they did not go on land. They rely heavily, strictly in the water. And they're about 35 centimeters long. Um, that's actually not very long if you think about it for 35 centimeters. So if you were to take a ruler and to measure that out, that's not a very big fish. Um, this is kind of a, uh, the fossil of what we have found and kind of what we decided to call it. Um, a drawing of somebody, um, and the model of what we think it may have looked like based off the fossils. Um, and then here's some bones. Um, the fin has one bone at the base of the fin. Um, and this is kind of what we see. And here is, this is the part of the fin here. So um, go ahead and um, jot down your notes. Um, if you need to pause this video at this moment, this is a good time to do so. Otherwise, we're going to keep moving on. All right, so um, understanding the ancient lung fish. Um, so uh, one of the things, uh, a question I want to ask is, what do you notice about the fins? Um, they're fat. Um, they're pretty large. Um, they're not like the fish we see and think of today. Um, the fins we see are pretty thin, actually, um, and they're kind of floppy, and um, they're sharp sometimes. Um, in this picture, they look really big and fat and thick. Um, so I'm sure it made it pretty hard to swim, but we don't know. Um, and we know, again, it was completely aquatic, so the habitat was water. Um, so that is something um, we want to understand about our lungfish. All right, so moving on um, to the next one is our next um, fish we see here. Um, the fossils are 308 million years old. I'm not even going to try to say the name because I'm not going to say it right. Um, go ahead and try if you like. Um, but essentially, the defining characteristics of this is it's, again, still completely aquatic. Um, they have a mix of amphibian and fish characteristics. Um, they're considered a lobe-finned fish and about 1.5 meters long. Um, what is... One of the questions I want to ask you is, how is this fish similar and different to the ancient lungfish? Well, they're both fish. The lungfish appears to be more like ray fins, um, and the heads are both roundish. Um, this fish in particular's eyes are higher on the head. Um, if you look right here, it's up here, versus the lungfish, they're on the sides. Um, so it probably allows for more um, visibility. Now, what about the fin structures? How are they similar? How are they different? Um, well, in this fish, it doesn't have many bones. If you look at the bone structure here, it has one bone, two bones, and, you know, maybe a third. Um, but we don't see a whole lot of bones in here. Um, from what we understand is they're kind of clumped together, and they're near the body. Um, even though um, it's lawn, um, it's a very fleshy and lobey pad. So if you kind of look like this, it kind of looks like a like a, a fin of a dolphin almost. But um, yeah, it's not a whole lot of bones compared to our lungfish. So 
The next one we're going to look at. So this fossil is about 360 million years old. Um, defining characteristics is paddle-like limbs with digits. Um, it's the first true fingers and toes that we see um, on our fish and amphibians. Um, no defined wrists or ankles, um, but it's primarily aquatic, meaning that it's mostly meant for the water. Um, it's about 60 centimeters long, so still kind of small. Um, but what we notice in the bone structure is that it has like a paddle, um, one bone, two bone structures, um, plus its digits. Digits are kind of like our phalanges, our fingers and our toes. So that's what you see here is your digits. Um, so when did it live? Well, it lived about 360 Maya. Um, so a million years ago is what that means. Maya, if I say that, it means a million years ago. Um, so how many years between... Um, was it is about 20 million years between the fish we just looked at so 380 to 360 um so and again 20 million years is a really long time for things to evolve and change so it although it seems like a short time it's really a long time um so but how are they similar and different well the fin we or the fish we just looked at they have fins um, and it's thought to be completely aquatic, as in this fish has flipper-like like limbs and fins um, with fingers. And actually, this one has no fins at all. Um, its head seems to be kind of flattish, as you can kind of see, a very flat head. And the eyes are on the top, um, and it has a very wide tail, as you see here. It's long and it's wide. Um, it may have left the water sometimes is to understanding um, and that's why it has um, its toes and its legs and whatnot. This is the first known example that we call um, teteropods. Tetera means four and pod means foot or limb. So a teteropod is a vertebrate organism with four limbs. Humans are also teteropods but we have four limbs and two arms, two legs. Um, this one had gills like a fish and its limbs could not support the weight. So this is why we think maybe it was mainly in the water because it couldn't support the weight in order to be on land. All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about is the last fish here we see. So this one we called a uh, pederpeeps. Um, I totally said that wrong, um, but that's okay. Um, this one's about 350 million years old. So between the fish we just looked at and this one, this is about 10 million years of a difference. Um, so that's when it existed. Um, but what characteris characteristics do you notice about this one? Um, well, it kind of looks maybe something you've seen in movies, actually. Um, it has true feet with fingers and toes. Um, it's considered the first true terrestrial teropod, and it's about one meter long. So if you know a meter stick, that's about how long it was. Um, it has, if you look in the structure here, you can see it has bones throughout its body, um, and it bones in its feet, in its face, all that kinds of stuff. Um, we know that it has some, maybe some bones missing. Um, we don't know if it, maybe it, it used to be there or not, um, but it just seems to be exist, uh, maybe missing from the fossil. Um, we do know that it is, um, it did have identifiable, identifiable, identifiable feet, excuse me, um, and no real fins at all. And again, it had a flat head. Um, it may have walked on land. Um, we don't know for sure. We will never know for sure. Um, but we're pretty confident that it did. Um, so these are some pretty important things that we can understand by looking at these fossils and understanding the history about them. Um, this allows us to understand and compare how things have changed from over time, from, you know, 390 million years ago to 350 million years. I mean, between that time, that's 40 million years. Um, that's a long time for things to change. So uh, these are important things to understand, understanding the gap and understanding how things uh, change over time.
Uh, one of the questions I'm going to ask you guys to answer um, now that we've kind of looked at these fossils is make sure you answer these questions in your notebook. Um, I want you guys to be able to um, know what you observed about the fish. What inferences can you make about these fish? Um, why were they well-dwelling fish and how did they move to land? Why did they move to land? Um, Think about the things we talked about yesterday and how things have changed with evolution and how things have changed with um, ecosystems um, and extinction. Um, what might have caused some fish to develop legs and feet over the course of millions of years? You know, what was the purpose of that? Um, where can we look for evidence about how vertebrates made the transition from water to land and from fish to animals with legs? You know, were we always meant to be fish? And what was the reasoning for that? Um, so again, make sure you answer these questions so that you can utilize these um, for studying and understanding the things that are coming in the near future. Um, so other than that, the last thing you have for today is remembering your focus question. What does the fossil record tell us about how life has changed over time? Um, you want to make sure you can answer that. Um, this is going to be our key question throughout our lessons and our unit. Um, make sure you have this chart filled out. This is essentially um, on top of those questions you've had to ask. Um, answer those discussion questions and you should be good. Um, other than that, if you have questions for me, let me know. Um, otherwise, um, happy learning.